So, we have ourselves a lot to go through when it comes to the Edmonton Oilers, and don't worry, we'll try our best to kind of give the entire scoop here. I don't want to focus on one small story, I want to talk about a bunch of things. So, yesterday, the hockey world received a big shiver down our spines, because a few seconds, only 37 seconds into Edmonton versus Columbus, we saw Connor McDavid get injured. And I'm not even going to go out there and, like, try to describe what happened on this play, but McDavid was coming in, he kind of fell down as he was trying to chase after the puck, he collided into the boards, and then he kind of slid around on his backside. Literally his backside, not his behind, he had his feet up in the air. And, you know, it didn't really look too comfortable as he was sliding out there on the ice. Anyways, he ended up getting up, he hobbled around, and then he left the game. That's it. Very, very unfortunate injury for Connor McDavid just seconds into the contest against Columbus. Like, the most unfortunate thing for him, too, considering how his game has always been based around his speed, it's been one of the strongest aspects of his career, that's totally not something you want to see. And I saw some people like, oh, Ivan Provorov, he took him down, like, I don't know, dude, I think that just McDavid lost an edge. He was driving wide, his feet kind of came out from under him, he slid into the boards, and then he got injured. I don't know what else there is to say about it. It's such an innocuous looking play that I don't know if there's really any discipline that's necessary in this position. But anyways, Connor McDavid left the game and now we had ourselves updates that Connor McDavid was going to leave the Edmonton Oilers road trip to go back to Edmonton for further testing. So, automatically, we know he's going to be out of the lineup for a while. How long, in fact? Well, let's go out there and read some tweets here. This one was from Hockey Patrol. Frank Saravelli on Daily Faceoff Live says, It looks like the best case scenario for Connor McDavid's injury is similar to Barkov's high ankle sprain. And Alex Barkov missed eight games. So, maybe a tenth of the season? Not really the most crazy thing out there. Who knows what the timeline for recovery for Connor Mack is going to be, whether it is in, let's say, a five to eight game kind of territory, if it extends a little bit beyond that. If he ends up missing out on 15 plus games, for example, then the Oilers, they're kind of cooked. Anyways, in response to the Connor McDavid injury, we had ourselves some extra news here. Take a look at this. While we await the news on Connor McDavid's health, the Oilers are bringing up Drake Kajula and Nola Phillip from AHL Bakersfield. Kajula is a nine-year pro and he last played for Edmonton on December 29th, 2018. Phillip almost made the Oilers out of training camp and at 26 is awaiting his NHL debut. Now, this is interesting. Good story, I would say, for Drake Kajula. I always remember him and have fond memories of him with the University of North Dakota Fighting Sioux because he played alongside Nick Schmaltz and Brock Besser on the famous CBS line. In fact, if you go back to videos that we made around the 2016 era, you'll see that I had Drake Kajula, Nick Schmaltz, and Besser on my Vancouver Canucks Be a GM franchise mode team because that line was so dominant and it was like one of the highlights in watching hockey for Vancouver Canucks. Canucks fans since the regular Vancouver Canucks team sucked ass in that time frame. Anyways, getting back on track here, all Drake Kajula memories aside, it's good to see him and Philip getting their opportunities, but of course it spells bolder and worse things for Edmonton as a whole when you consider what this essentially means for Connor McDavid and his timeline of recovery. Now, I also wanted to talk about some other guys and other stories with Edmonton, because when it comes to this team, I mean... There are some other guys that have been snakebitten to heck. Here's a post made on the R Edmonton Oilers subreddit by Pitterpatter74. Here's some snakebitten Oilers forwards. At some point soon, the dam is going to burst wide open for the Oilers offense. Zach Hyman has zero goals on 25 shots, but is a 13.4% career shooter. Skinner has two goals on 33 shots, but he's a career 11.2% shooter. McDavid has three goals on 30 shots, but is a career 15.1% shooter. And then Victor Arvidsson has zero goals on 17 shots. He's a career 10.9% shooter. Combined, these four have only five goals on 105 shots, when they should be around 14 goals. It will turn around very soon, and the Oilers will go on an offensive heater. 
Now, the thing is, hockey is hockey. We understand that no team is going to be super consistent for all 82 games of the year. No one player is going to be very consistent for all 82 games of the year, unless your name is Nikita Kucherov. But realistically, when you think about this, like, yeah, the Oilers are too good. They're too poised and too offensively capable on paper to suck as much as they have been for the rest of the year. Even last year, we had talks like these. Hey, they're much better than they're performing. They just need to get out of the hole. They need to get something going. And then they fired Jay Woodcroft, and then they got Knobloch, and then they started winning, and McDavid had 100 assists, and everything was looking great. Maybe McDavid isn't necessarily a goal scorer anymore now. He already proved to the world that he can get 60. Now he wants to focus on everything around that. But I think the biggest, most egregious player on this list that has not gotten going yet is Zach Hyman. And I do think it's like one of the bigger stories around the league, but because there are so many other things wrong with Edmonton right now too, the goaltending, the McDavid injury, etc, etc, it's not the most talked about thing, but I do think it's the biggest thing. And some of the replies here on the Edmonton Oilers sub agree, the biggest puzzle is Hyman. Same role and same line mates, but no results. I'm guessing opposing teams might have scouted him better. I don't really think so. He's still getting a ton of chances. He actually leads the league in goals scored below expected. He just isn't finishing. I think part bounces, part confidence probably on his end. Once he gets one, I think they'll come. Another reply here says he's just rushing the puck by half a second. He scores three or four goals already if he just held the puck for a little while longer. And just in case you needed the scoop here, go over to Zach Hyman and his overall points. He's at one point in 10 games and zero goals for a guy who had 83 points two seasons ago and 54 goals last season. To be on pace for only eight assists and zero goals on the year is terrible. Like, I don't want to say necessarily he's playing poorly, quote unquote, because I understand that Zach Hyman brings value when he's not necessarily just scoring goals. He's a threat, he's a presence, he's physical, he's in the paint. He loves to be that guy in deep. But look, when you're not producing, what, like, this is the guy who formed a new reality for himself after leaving Toronto, being this goal-scoring net front presence. So when he's not doing that, when he's not scoring, you gotta really wonder what's happening here. And we're seeing articles get written about this. I mean, Jason Bukala wrote this piece earlier this morning, just kind of asking if Zach Hyman has been unlucky or if he's been bad straight up. And if you read the piece, I mean, there's kind of a combination that is a bit of both. There are some gifts in the article showing moments where Zach Hyman just did not pull the trigger, etc., etc. I mean, this is a different player for some reason. Whatever has happened to Mr. 007, he's now Mr. 0010. Like, and even tweets like this are going out there and being made. Not even Zach Hyman's parents could buy him a goal right now. And obviously, that's in reference to the Andrew Berkshire stuff that made the Browns last year. Or was it two years ago? I'm not too sure. Ah, uh, yeah. Wealth. You know, rich parents growing up. That's why he's in the NHL. Obviously, you know, it plays a part into the opportunities, but I'm not going to go out there and say that just because Zach Hyman had rich parents, that's what made him a superstar caliber player. Plus, that kind of conversation isn't really needed, in my opinion. Anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comments section below about Connor McDavid, the Oilers, the injury updates, and the recallings of Drake Kajula and Noah Phillip, how they're going to try to rebound from this, try to string together some wins without Connor Mack. Alex Barkov and the Florida Panthers, that was a different situation over there. The Panthers did have some success, I would say. I mean, they lost to Vancouver, but that's besides the point. They're still a good enough team to do things without Barkov. The Oilers without McDavid, though. Oh, P.U. They stunk yesterday against the Blue Jackets. Columbus took it to them. Now they've got Nashville and the Steven Stamkos train, so we're going to see how that ends up going. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section either way about the oil. What are your thoughts on where they should go next? What are your thoughts on the injuries? And what are your thoughts on Zach Hyman scoring zero goals in 10 games? 1.2 ridiculous. Thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Share, 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 share,